We'll always defend the rights of Canadians to peaceful assembly and to freedom of expression. But these blockades are illegal. And if you're still participating, the time to go home is now. Well, that was Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau talking about why he chose to invoke the Emergencies Act for the first time in the country's history. The law gives the federal government more power to control the Freedom Convoy's blockades and occupations, like giving the police more resources to enforce fines and imprisonment, and even banks can freeze personal accounts of anyone linked with the protest without a court order. Yeah, that's really unbelievable. Hundreds of truckers still line the streets of Ottawa near the Parliament as the demonstrations enter a third week. Trudeau has been largely criticized for his response to the convoy, so he made sure to lay out what these emergency powers are are not. We're not using the Emergencies Act to call in the military. We're not suspending fundamental rights or overriding the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. We are not limiting people's freedom of speech. We are not limiting freedom of peaceful assembly. Well, joining us now to discuss is the spokesman for the Canada Freedom Convoy, Ben Dichter. Ben, so great to have you back on. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. Good to be here. So when we spoke uh, about a week ago, you felt like there was progress being made. Do you feel like anything has changed in the time since then? Uh, yeah, I think he's actually stepped in something. Uh, so there was a statement released about an hour ago from the Canadian Civil Liberties Association. Now, very important to understand, this is a liberal organization. This is his base of support. They're very partisan. And their statement reads, I'll read it to you very quickly, it's on Twitter, the federal government has not met the threshold necessary to invoke the Emergencies Act. The Emergencies Act can only be invoked when a situation seriously threatens the ability of the government of Canada to preserve the sovereignty, security, and territorial integrity of Canada, and when the situation cannot be effectively dealt with under any other law in Canada. Now, we have a bunch of trucks that are, you might say, are parked illegally, and some bouncy castles and some barbecues. And the whole use of the word uh, blockade is hysterical because everybody is walking around the city Cars are driving around the city, traffic flows, emergency vehicles can, can maneuver because we made pass specifically for them. Uh, the term of blockade in, in itself is deceptive, but I don't know. I guess he doesn't like bouncy castles, but he, he does like dressing up in makeup. <laughs> and, and going along lines with that, not you know the bouncy castle or uh, bouncy castles and putting on makeup, but at least four provinces disagree with Trudeau's choice to invoke these emergency powers, and that includes the premier of Saskatchewan, Scott Moe, who tweeted this: "The illegal blockades must end, but police already have sufficient tools to enforce the law and clear the blockades." as they did over the weekend in Windsor. So what is really behind this, do you think? Well, two things. So when Scott Moe refers to blockades, he's talking about the border being blockaded, right. right? Which is very different than us parking illegally in downtown Ottawa, right in front of Trudeau's office, right? It's, it's quite funny. Um, I don't think that we're gonna, uh, I think what we're seeing is fear. They're out of options. This was his last card to play. He's played it, and you know what we have? All the time in the world. And we'll just wait it out. Are, you, know, are you concerned? What, what, though, what about the power being given to the banks now, though? Uh, the financial uh, resources that they could cut off without, an, without a warrant or anything? Uh, that's extremely concerning. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things we did last week is we made a move for our uh, funding to go to Bitcoin because, as you know, uh, GoFundMe canceled our $9 million in donations. And then Give, Send, Go had the same treatment from the, on the government of Ontario. So luckily, Give, Send, Go is an American company, and they're holding on to the money while we fight it in court and our lawyers are litigating it. But we went to cryptocurrency and Bitcoin as an alternative. 
So then they slide in, oh, now Bitcoin's illegal. Sure, let's just make everything illegal. Let's just make up laws however we want. Like That's not how the process works here. I'd hate to disappoint them. And they are digging a very deep trap for themselves, and it's going to blow up in their face. All right, Ben, thank you very much for joining us, and good luck. All right, thank you. All right. We have been hearing plenty about a possible trucker convoy uh, here in the United States as well, Jen, and the man behind it joins us now, uh, the co-organizer of the People's Convoy, Brian uh, Brazi. Uh, Brian, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, the most alarming news to me is what I was just asking about, and that is that banks there in Canada will be able to just freeze the accounts on the mere suspicion of involvement with this convoy. So the concern becomes, could that happen here in the U.S.? Because we've already seen examples of deplatforming and debanking here. We had J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, Facebook, Twitter, even the IRS targeting conservatives. Yeah, that's definitely an issue um, for us going forward as well. Luckily, we've also taken the same steps. We're going out on the blockchain. And for those that want to donate, there is the ability to uh, donate to an Ethereum or Bitcoin wallet, uh, as well as your traditional methods of donating. You can find all that information on thepeoplesconvoy.org, thepeoplesconvoy.org. Brian, I know a lot of our viewers are very interested in this. They want to get involved uh, in whatever way they can. Can you give us some details on what we're looking at, how they can also participate? Yeah, so actually I'm super happy to announce on your show, first time here, uh, dropping, the, dropping the, the start date here. So officially, this is from the top, this is what's happening. We will be launching our convoy February 23rd, Wednesday, February 23rd, beginning in the Barstow area. Um, routes will be uh, announced within the week exactly, um, but uh, we are launching February 23rd out of the Barstow, California area, and we will be marching our way east. So when do you plan on yeah. arriving uh, in the swamp? That's the, <laughs> that's that's the million question. dollar question. That is everyone's question. Um, it's going to be a slow go, and we'll be updating as we move along. I just want to make sure it's clear that this is a peaceful protest, peaceful, <laughs> reiterate, peaceful, and that um, we will uh, release those details on our arrival as we um, narrow it down. We have convoys coming from every direction in the country. We have a main shoot coming out of Barstow, but there's people coming out of the Northwest, the Southeast, out of Texas, up out of Maine. There are convoys coming from every direction. Um, I'm just one small piece, you know, that's working with a, with a great team of co-organizers. We have state leads. I mean, this is, this is bigger than any person. I'm not the leader by any means of this. I'm just a co-organizer. And um, we are trying to coordinate that effectively to arrive at the same time while meeting up along the way to grow our convoy. And, you know, bigger than any one person and really bigger than any one political party. And I was wondering what your thoughts are on um, some, let's see, media and others trying to make this about uh, left, you know, left wing politics or right wing politics when really it's about working class Americans and what's happening to everyday Americans out there who can't afford to pay for their meals. They can't get their supplies. They just really want everything to get back to normal. Yeah, I mean, the bottom line is we need to end the Emergency Powers Act. That'll help get rid of the mandates, obviously. Um, and that's pretty much what we're asking for, restore, to restore order to our country, basically. You know, um, we want to be able to hold some of these people accountable that led us to this. Both elected and unelected officials need to be held accountable for this. But, um, you know, the, the bottom line is, is that this is the people's convoy. It's called the people's convoy for a reason. It's not just truckers. We're just the ones standing up. But we want everybody involved. This is not an aisle issue. This isn't a right wing thing. This isn't a left wing thing. And no matter how much they try to paint it that way, I think it'll be pretty clear just walking around our convoy that you'll see all walks of life are involved in this. All Americans are welcome to this convoy. That's awesome. Well, Brian, we are so glad that you could join us tonight. I hope that you'll come back soon. And in the meantime, we wish you all the best in your journey as you uh, get started making your way to D.C. Yeah. Thank you for having me and happy Valentine's Day, lady. <laughs> to you too. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you.